I'm Tom Fells. I'm here in my studio in North Bennington, Vermont, to tell you a bit about the art in Light and Shadow at the Mitchell Giddings Gallery in Brattleboro, uh, which runs from January 7th to February 7th this year, 2016. Uh, there's not much on the walls here, as you will see. Uh, most of the material is packed and ready for the show. Um, but I do have some examples to show you. Um, the full title of the show is uh, Light and Shadow Cyanotypes and Drawings by Tom Fels. So what is a cyanotype and what sort of drawings? I will show you that. Um, let's start with cyanotypes uh, because there's much more to explain. Many people don't know what a cyanotype is. The earliest cyanotypes were done by a woman named Anna Atkins, who was a 19th century adventurous young lady who wanted to illustrate her father's botanical work. This is a book of them from a dealer in New York. And you'll see cyanotypes are all blue. This is because of the chemistry of the process, uh, which I'll explain in a second. But these are only about a foot high. These are, these are life size, whereas the ones I make are, are quite a bit larger. Now, I'll unwrap a few of these. These are not the cyanotypes in the show, but these are their cousins. Tell me how this is working out. Looks good. There are two types of cyanotypes here that I'm going to show you. One, the earlier type, which is this, this is from a series called Hedges. This is the lower part of a hedge. These are taken directly from a tree or a bush. I have to go right in there, and what you see that's white is touching, and what's blue uh, is all exposed to sun. So it's sun and no sun. And you get, if you do it right, you get a lot of depth. People really like these. They both have um, a lot of detail, and they're nice to see across a room. The other type is something that I've started this fall because in the fall you can't, in the winter you can't make many cyanotypes. There are no leaves and it's too cold outside. So I gathered a lot of leaves. These are ginkgo leaves. And I found that if I spread them out, I could expose them on my porch and make wintertime cyanotypes. This is oak leaves. And these are sycamore from Paris. These three will all um, cyanotypes of this type, not these exact ones, will all be in the in the show, including the hedges. So now, how are they made? Um, this is more challenging. And for this, I'll do a little demonstration. Suppose that this was the cyanotype paper. It's um, covered with photosensitive material. This one isn't. And suppose I were to put a leaf on it, you can see if the sun were above it, you would get a shadow. You leave it for a few minutes, maybe five minutes, depending on the sun. Take the leaf off, bathe it in water, and you get something very much like this has to dry overnight though. So that's the process. It, it's hard to understand from the actual print, so I like to demonstrate it for people. Paper, leaves, sunlight, wash it, and that's, that's a lot of the process. Um, I'm also going to be showing some smaller pieces uh, that were done indoors, totally indoors in the winter but this is the picture on the large cyanotypes. These are the drawings, the sort of drawings I'll be showing. These are minimalist drawings. They're just shapes done by making straight lines. And uh, it's very meditative. I enjoy doing these. You press down and just spend a while making these lines. What's interesting about them, though, is that you get these patterns, and those patterns come from 
two things. One is how you press on the pencil. So you can see I'm doing something there right after I let up. And then the other thing of interest is these breaks that uh, just occur when you, you can't go any farther and you start again. So even though they're, they're basically uh, pieces that you can look at at a distance and, and see a shape, a lot of the interest is in all these variations that come. Uh, so there are squares, there are rectangles in the show. <clears throat> Some are broader, done with a, a wider piece of graphite. Um, some are larger. Uh, I don't know if I have any here, but some are circles or triangles. Here's two together. And they make a very nice complement to the blue cyanotypes. Um, so that's really, uh, those are the two sorts of things that are going to be in the show. I wanted to mention, where do these come from? I, I keep notebooks. I don't even use a camera anymore. Uh, I take a notebook when I travel and I do all kinds of drawings and the drawings tend to use lines in one way or another and one of my notebooks I simply started at zero with a few lines and I ended up with this style that I've used ever since the last few years so that was an exciting adventure sometimes also I go back to these books Here's an abbey in England, and I take the subject and I, I make something larger out of it. I transfer it if it's something that I enjoy. I think this is Fountain's Abbey, and the pictures of Oxford and so on. Um, so it's an ongoing process, and I'll be glad to see it in the gallery. Um, so I hope you will enjoy the show. Uh, I wanted to mention three very different drawings are going to be shown at the same time at the Brattleboro Museum all during January uh, in a totally different style. So uh, if you see those, you will be, uh, you'll have the full spectrum of what I've been doing the last few years. Uh, also of note, uh, some of my cyanotypes are being shown in London during January, if you happen to be over there. <laughs>